Hey everybody, my name is Liam Angel, aka Straight Shooting LJ, and welcome to the inaugural episode of the LE Bikes Opinion Pieces. Now, where I would like to start this series is with the recent, can you really call it a debate? Maybe a discussion? Yeah. Between Richard Madeley, Timmy Mallet, and Howard Cox. Now, Howard Cox is the Fair Fuel UK founder, and of course Richard Madeley, one of the hosts on um, one of the hosts on Good Morning Britain, and Timmy Mallet. Hey, I actually grew up with Timmy Mallet actually as a kids TV presenter, but he is a advocate of cycling, a cycling enthusiast, very much the same as me. So, I. Would like to would like to first and foremost say that the debate, which I kind of struggle to call it a debate, for the pure fact that Richard Madeley kept on interrupting Timmy Mallet, and I'll come back to that in a bit because the whole debate was around basically getting cyclists to. Uh, well, them discussing about cyclists having reg registration plates, which on a bicycle would look absolutely absurd. But Howard Cox also mentioned about a tabard, and it's like, well, no, that doesn't really work either. Because, for instance, if you're wearing a high vis vest, then you're covering it with a tabard and kind of negating the whole reason for having a high vis vest, which is to be seen. But one of the weird things about, about this quote-unquote debate is the fact that, as said, Maidley kept interrupting Timmy Mallet whenever he tried to start a point, but he wouldn't interrupt Howard Cox when he was making his point. And Howard Cox very much annoyed me because some of the things he said, such as, oh, cyclists are running riot, it's like, where are they running riot? Like, I, no, <laughs> that's that's a that's a poor point. But also him saying cyclists don't contribute anything to the road. That comment irked me especially because I thought to myself, okay, we we're not paying road tax, MOT, and that kind of thing. Okay, yeah, fine, you've got a point there, but why should we need to? Um, especially with electric bikes, and it's and it's kind of like. When he when he said we don't contribute anything to the roads, it's a case of well we're not blocking up the roads and we're not ruining the roads either. So it's it's kind of it's it's kind of it was a very weird statement and it was it was a weird debate where it's like as I said Timmy Mallet couldn't get a word in edgeways because he kept being interrupted by Richard Madeley, which was just absolutely absurd. But the registration thing. I do not think that cyclists should be road tax MOT'd um, and registrations and all that. Because part of the reason why a lot of us cycle, and especially on electric bikes, which get us from A to B a bit quicker than a regular road bike, it's a case of we're doing it to save money. I commute around. I commute around on my electric bikes a lot. I have a full-size Carrera Vengeance that I've converted with a 250 watt motor on it, and also I have a folding intercity um, Carrera as well that I've also done the conversion on. Conversion kits available on lebikes.co.uk, by the way. Um, and it's a case of they get me from A to B a lot quicker than waiting 15 minutes for a bus and it being packed and you're tinned in like sardines. Same with the tube which the prices on both are always going up, always going up year on year, sometimes twice a year. And I am saving literally hundreds of pounds, hundreds of pounds a year. I think it's probably about five, 600 quid a year. I'll delve into that on another episode, but I'm saving hundreds of pounds a year, not commuting by bus or train or tube. And also I haven't got a deal with the strikes or anything like that. I carry some tire levers, couple of spare inner tubes and a mini pump in my bag wherever I go so if I do get a puncture not that much of an inconvenience it's like 10-15 minute job to change it over 
And because I've got a mid-drive motor, it's just like doing it on a normal bike. So all this convenience and say and cost savings is why I wouldn't want electric bikes or regular bikes to be registered, taxed, MOT, because then you have to pay hundreds of pounds a year to renew that. So no, I, I totally disagree. One thing that would be interesting is that whole thing about a year ago about mandatory helmets because mandatory helmets is a very interesting topic because I is here's one of my helmets and as you can see I put these snazzy reflectors on this is one of my helmets I've also I've also got the same helmet in fluoro yellow and I've got this helmet which I'm going to be wearing during the winter when it gets colder but it's a mountain warehouse one solid so for me safety is safety is paramount and a few months ago and a couple of months ago i was actually i was actually deliberately knocked off my bike by a motorist um in a hit and run so it's one of them where if people like people are complaining that cyclists are dangerous you've also got motorists who are dangerous to cyclists and in my case i had a hit and run perpetrated on me and the police couldn't trace it even though I got the license plate and even though the witness who saw what happened to me got the license plate, couldn't be traced. Apparently the car wasn't registered to anybody. So those who are saying that, oh, ma mandatory registration for cyclists, oh, it needs to happen so, we can, so um, it can reduce accidents. No, it actually won't. There's no proof that it will. There's no correlation there. Because I said I have my own experience of it of being of being the victim of a hit and run, and that car couldn't be traced. That car will have been MOT'd, Rotexed, all that, but apparently wasn't registered to anybody. So where does that leave you? There are, admittedly, there are there are cyclists such as delivery riders who are under massive pressure to get as many orders done as possible because the gig economy is like that. But I'm not going to get into that in detail. But the fact of the matter, but the fact of the matter is, is that there needs to be education. There needs to be cooperation. I think cycling proficiency should be mandatory in schools. I really do think that because cycling proficiency will teach you the basics of hopefully the highway code, but also as well how to ride a bike, how to be aware of your surroundings, and other things such as that. So I think that's crucial. And also, people need to stop demonizing cyclists. Media perception is something I'll get into in another episode. But there's also that as well, where cyclists are easy scapegoats. But you know what? I want to know your opinions. I want to know your opinions. Lebikes.co.uk is our official website. If you're looking for custom builds, electric bikes, electric bike batteries, mid-drive motor kits, that is the place to go. Lebikes.co.uk. We're on Instagram at Lebikesltd on Instagram. You can email us, Lebikesltd at gmail.com. We're on Facebook, Facebook at Lebikes on Facebook. We're on Twitter at Ellie Bikes as well, and also Ellie Bikes on TikTok as well. We're also on Snapchat. So everywhere you are is where we are. What do you what do you think about registration plates? Should bicycles should electric bikes have registration plates and be taxed and MOT'd like mopeds and that kind of thing as well? Let me know your thoughts. I have been Liam Angel, aka Straight Shooting LJA, and thank you for your time. All the best, people.